Hello again. Ready for our next story from Exodus, the second book of the Bible. Now we learned last time about the Passover and how God passed over the Israelites as long as they had the blood around the doorpost that proved that they had um, sacrificed the lamb to protect them from the angel of death. And then after Pharaoh's son died, he finally said, okay, Israelites, you may go. And God wanted to deliver his people from Egypt. And Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, was so stubborn. And he had to make a way to let the Israelites leave their slavery. God had to make a way to have Pharaoh allow the Israelites to go. So that night, that firstborn child of every family died. And God spared the Hebrew families. Finally, Pharaoh said, okay, you can go. And everywhere in the city, people were crying. Even the king was crying for his dead son. And finally, he was ready to obey God, and the children of Israel were allowed to leave. And in the land of Goshen, everyone was so excited. They had to pass, uh, pack up quickly. The word spread fast. All right, it's time to pack up. Let's go. Remember we talked about how they had to eat their dinner with their shoes on to be ready to go as soon as it was time. And so... I'm telling you, it was so many people, not a hundred people, not a thousand people, but a million people had to pack up and they also even brought their animals and they left their homes and headed out into the desert around Israel or uh, Egypt is all like desert land. And so the people had to be ready to go on this journey and God had promised, God promised Abraham. A special land called the promised land and the people were finally going to be allowed to leave Egypt and go to the land that God promised them Wow so thousands and thousands of Israelites started leaving their homes and started filing out of Egypt little by little each family would stay together and they would bring their sheep or their cows with that they had and they um, I'm sure that it was an exciting such an exciting day for all of the Israelites and how do you think it would have felt to go on this it's kind of like a big long camping trip but they were never going to go back to um, their home in Egypt so all of those people had to get ready to go and like I said it was a million people it was a lot of people not just a few but a whole lot and so the people left and packed up and who was in front of them? Of course, it was Moses. And there was Moses guiding them. Now, did Moses know exactly where to go? He really didn't. But he was ready to obey God. And he had his big, long staff in his hand. And how would Moses know where to go? Well, it was pretty amazing. Because there was a cloud that would guide them. And this cloud would be like a shining cloud of fire uh, in the daytime where they can see it. And at night, it would be a, a cloud of fire and it would be all lit up. So as long as they followed that cloud of uh, the cloud in the day and the fire in the night, they knew where to go. Well, back in Egypt, Pharaoh and his people finally realized, wait a minute, the Israelites are gone and they left. Now what are they going to do? They didn't have their slaves. Who is going to build their big pyramids and all of their uh, homes and everything? How, how are they going to get all that work done? And they thought, do we really want them to be gone? Oh no, what are we going to do? And Pharaoh said, oh, we need to get them back. Once again, he changed his mind. And so he gathered an army together, including 600 of his fastest chariots. And they began to run after their formal slaves, former slaves. Now the children of Israel had gone before for a few days when Pharaoh changed his mind. But they ran as fast as they could in their chariots with their horses to try to catch up. And as the Israelites were going along, I'm sure they were very excited, but they were probably getting a little bit tired after they, after all, they'd been gone a few days. But then there was, there was quite a bit of distance between them. Like I said, it had been several days, but wouldn't you know it, all of a sudden, they started hearing something in the distance. What was that rumbling sound? What in the world could that noise be? 
and it kind of sounded like galloping. And they heard this noise in the background. What is that? It's this galloping sound. And I'm sure they thought, oh no, what are we going to do? What's, what is that? What's coming? Well, it was Pharaoh and his army that were coming. And the problem was, suddenly they got to the Red Sea. God had led them right to this land, the sea. And there was the water. But then there were all these people. And they heard Pharaoh's army coming. Do you think they panicked? Oh my goodness, I'm sure they were frightened. What are we going to do, the people said. And imagine the crowds right on that riverbank. And right exactly when it was time, when the, the um, chariots got there, all of a sudden, they were getting closer and closer. They could hear those hooves beats going bow, bow, up, getting closer and closer and closer. And oh my goodness. I'm sure they were getting so afraid, but Moses cried out to God and God said, put your staff in the water. And when he put his staff in the water, oh my goodness, all of a sudden the water parted and it started going, all of the water started collecting on the two sides of the land, the path. Suddenly there was like a wall of water on each side and there was dry land. Isn't that amazing? And so it was a miracle. And then the pillar of smoke started crossing over. So the children of Israel were able to start walking across. Can you imagine how amazing that would be to have this huge wall of water on each side? I imagine you could see the fish swimming in there. <laughs> that was really cool. But, oh, it was neat. Well, when the Egyptians got there, they all, so uh, the children of Israel all crossed safely to the other side. And then when the Egyptians saw that they were across on the other side and they saw this interesting pathway through the water, the Egyptians raced their chariots right in with them right afterwards. But by that time, the Israelites all got to the other side safe and sound and God closed the waters. And all the water came crashing down right on top of all of those soldiers and those chariots and the horses. And they were completely buried in water. Isn't that amazing? God protected them from those soldiers. They shouldn't have changed their mind. They should not have come after them, should they? Well, the, the children of Israel and Moses sang this song. I will sing unto the Lord. For he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and rider hath he thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my salvation. God had saved his people again. Did they need to be afraid and worry? I'm sure they were very scared. But they put their faith and trust in God. And God protected them and God saved them from their enemy. It was amazing. And as long as the children of Israel trust and obey Jesus or obey God, we're going to find out more and more all through the story in the Bible. When his children listen to him and obey, he takes care of them and he protects them. And if we trust God and learn not to complain and not worry, but just pray, ask for his help, just like Moses did, God's there for us too.